A good ball moving down court, but Neal's unable to convert. It did not hit the rim, so a shot clock violation. And now the officials are discussing it over. And it is a shot clock violation. The ball did not hit the rim. And that's what the argument's all about. The Eagles have possession either way. 3.33 left to play. It's a tie ball game. 67 apiece. Perry finds Dixon just outside the paint. Ball's knocked away. Grabbed by Robinson. Here come the Bruins with a chance to regain the lead. Three-point attempt from Carter. In and out. Gary Mims rebound. Long pass to Johnson. He is able to get the layup off, but it does not fall. Carter picks it up, gets it down court very quickly, and a timeout for Piedmont International. Comes up the 259 mark, tied at 67. Full timeout, the first one called against Piedmont International. Like we said a few times already, these two teams have already played an overtime game earlier this season. They're tied at 67 with 2.59 left on the clock. Big difference has been at the free throw line where Piedmont International is 26 for 33. More than one third of their points have come from the line. For Trinity, Marcus Dixon has come to life here in the second half. 13 points overall, eight of them coming here in the second. Ernest Johnson has 15. The Nash Carter, the big story, he's hit 10 consecutive free throws all in this second half. He has a total of 15 points. And we are ready to resume. Tied at 67. Two minutes, 59 seconds left on regulation. Piedmont will inbound right at their own bench. Valentine will do the honors. 27 seconds on the shot clock. Robinson finds Neal off the glass and in. Two-point lead for the Bruins, 69-67. Bounce pass to Johnson, looking for Dixon. And we got a reach-in foul. Reach-in foul called on Justin Valentine. That'll send Dixon to the line. One and one for Marcus Dixon, that's team foul number seven. Off the rim, rebound Bruins. Two twenty left to play, the Bruins lead by two. Neal in the corner, finds Carter. Guarded well by Antoine. He gets around Antoine and layup attempt is blocked. And a whistle and a foul will be called on Tamari Glenn. That is his first and team foul number eight. One and one coming up for Darnell Antoine. He has not shot a free throw yet today. And a substitution for Piedmont, number 21, Amon Matthews, back on the court. One and one for Darnell Antoine. That one goes in, so he gets another. Antoine, a 63.4% free throw shooter on the season.
One point deficit for the Eagles. Free throw is good and we're tied at 69. Two points on the afternoon for Antoine, both coming right there at the line. And we're back underway. Gary Mims back on the court for the Eagles. Mims, Lumine, Tucker, Johnson, Antoine on the court for Trinity. Pass down underneath the Nash Carter and he puts the game back ahead by two. 17 for Carter. That's a two-point Bruins lead. 1.38 left in regulation. Brandon Tucker steps out of bounds and turns it over to the Bruins. Timeout, Coach Jones with 1.32 left to play. It'll be a full 60-second timeout. Regarding fouls, Zach Norris has four for Trinity. Gary Mims, Denson Lumi, Brandon Tucker, Markel Perry, each with three. Marcus Dixon, Darnell Antoine with two. Nash Carter has four for Piedmont. Justin Valentine, four fouls. He's been on the bench. For these last few minutes, Tamari Glenn, one, LJ Williams, two, Amon Matthews, two, Josh Daniels, one, and Robert Neal with four. Right now, you just need your best on the court. It's a two-point ball game. Piedmont International leads 71 to 69. Just over a minute and a half left on the clock. Piedmont will inbound after the turnover. So the Eagles need a stop. Bruins bring it up court, using up some clock. 120 left to play. Carter, jump shot, and a foul. Lumine and Johnson were both there, and the call is on Denson Lumine. That is his fourth, and Nash Carter once again at the line where he is 11 for 11. Marcus Dixon makes his way up to the lane. Two-point Bruins lead pending these two free throws. First one is good. Nash Carter has been an all-star today from the free throw line. 12 out of 12 and here comes number 13. It is good. And the Eagles trail by four. 114 left on the clock. Antoine lets it roll, picks it up at midcourt, and a timeout for Coach Jones. One thirteen left on the clock. Piedmont International leads it 73 to 69. Lady Eagles are out of the locker room cheering on their counterparts on the court. They will take the court at the conclusion of this one. Lady Eagles will take on the Bruins of Piedmont International. Tip off is scheduled for four o'clock. That is likely to start a little bit late. Eagles defeated Tacoa Falls College 56 to 41 last night. The Lady Bruins are coming in at 4 and 15, but they are 3 and 2 in the South region. That is the Eagles record rather. No information on the Bruins at this time. We'll see if we can get that to you at the start of the women's game. 
Bruins are back on the court. Here come the Eagles. Gary Mims will inbound at the table. Eagles need a score and a stop. 113 left to play. Point attempt from Mims off the rim, rebound by the Bruins. Glenn's able to get around Johnson. There was contact and no foul called, and now Johnson with the reach in, he will be called for his first foul. At the line. Shooting two to Mari Glenn, double bonus for the Bruins. First one misses. It's a two possession game. Four point Bruins lead, 44.2 seconds left. Free throw number two is out. Johnson with the rebound. And again, the Eagles need a score and a stop. Carter. And now the Bruins were able to slow it down. And another foul on the Eagles. Gary Mims picks up foul number four. Double bonus for the Bruins. And again, it is Nash Carter. First one is good. The dirty dozen from Ash Carter. Baker's dozen rather, 13 in a row. And here comes Zach Norris on the court. He is a three-point shooter. Free throw number two. First one miss for Nash Carter. 25 seconds left, shot clock is off. Tucker inside, he gets the basket and a whistle. Foul called on Josh Daniels. Brandon Tucker got the basket. He has eight. Checking in for Piedmont, number 21, Amon Matthews. One shot coming up for Tucker. Free throw, no good. It's a three-point game and a whistle. And we'll see what the call is. Foul called on number 12, Tamari Glenn. That is his second. Ernest Johnson at the line. Nick Gibson ready to check in. Eagles trail by three. First free throw, in and out. Gibson back on the court. Free throw number two, yes. Two point deficit for the Eagles and a timeout. 19.7 seconds left. Piedmont 74, Trinity 72. Full timeout for Coach Jones. Again, the Eagles after today have four games remaining in the regular season, all of them at home. The Eagles will host Pensacola Christian next Saturday, February 4th at 4 p.m. The Sons of Johnson University of Florida come on February 7th, 7 p.m. tip-off. Crown College of the Bible, February 11th at 4 p.m. And the regular season finale against Johnson University of Tennessee, 7 o'clock tip-off time on February 13th. 
The NCCAA Division II South Region Tournament will take place in Greenville, South Carolina at Bob Jones University beginning on February 23rd and the National Tournament in Akeny, Iowa, March 8th through the 11th. Right now the Eagles trail by two and they need a quick stop. 19.7 seconds left. And a timeout call this time by Piedmont's head coach, Mr. Josh Howard. 30-second timeout. Terrific defense by the Eagles forcing that timeout. Coach Jones giving instructions to his players. Again, the Eagles need a quick stop. And they need a score trailing by two. Piedmont after today, they will host Johnson University of Tennessee on February 3rd. That's next Friday night. Brown College at 2 p.m. next Saturday afternoon, February 4th. Bruins will travel to Johnson and Wales in Charlotte, North Carolina on February 7th. Host Appalachian Bible College on the 9th. A couple of road games and the regular season finale will occur on February 17th. Whistle was a delay to reset the clock to 19.7 seconds. Bruins inbound. Into the hands of Carter, and he is fouled by Gibson, and that will put Carter back at the line for two more. First foul on Nick Gibson. Good strategy by the Bruins, getting the ball into the hands of a man who is 13 for 14 from the charity strike. First free throw is good. Three point game at the moment. If Carter sinks this one, it'll be a two possession game. And that is exactly what happens and the Eagles Trailing by four, 76 to 72, clock down to 15 seconds. Mims inside off the glass, no good, gets the rebound and puts it back in and a timeout. The bucket is good for Gary Mims. It's a two point game with 6.7 seconds left on the clock. And again, the Eagles need a very quick stop, a steal and a basket. Those two road games remaining after the Appalachian Bible College home game for Piedmont at Tacoa Falls College, South Region game on February 11th. And on the 13th, they will travel to Swanoa, North Carolina to take on Warren Wilson. The Bruins will have Josh Howard Basketball Clinic from February 17th and the 18th by invitation only. And they'll prepare for the South Region Tournament as well, February 23rd through the 25th. Two point game. Three times the Bruins have fought back from nine points or more. 12 point deficit at halftime. They now lead by two with just seconds left on the clock. Eagles on defense looking for a steal. And we're gonna have a foul call, the pushing foul on number 33, Robert Neal. Or rather, Robert Neal was pushed and he's going to the line. Initial indications look like the foul was against Neal, but he is the beneficiary. He's at the line for two. And it is good. It's 
Zach Norris back on the court. It's a three-point game. Big free throw coming up for Robert Neal. That was his first attempt of the afternoon, and number two is also good. So again, it's a four-point lead for the Bruins. Darnell Antoine for three, and he is fouled. Nash Carter picks up the foul, and that is three free throws coming up for Darnell Antoine. Less than a second left on the clock. Three free throws coming up. It's a four-point deficit. Antoine hits the first. Free throw number two coming up for Antoine. He's three for three now on the afternoon. And now an interesting situation. The Eagles trail by one. So what they need with less than a second left, and the officials are going to discuss the time on the clock. The ball to hit off the rim, and the Eagles able to put it back in before the buzzer sounds. Seventy-eight, seventy-six Bruins. Coach Jones want to check things over with the officials and the scorers. Once again, it's a two-point game, so Antoine likely going to hit the ball off the rim. Gary Mims and Ernest Johnson are underneath looking for the tip-in. Discussion at the table, two officials and coaches from each team making sure everything on the scoreboard is correct. And so far no changes to the scoreboard have been made so it looks like we have less than a second. It says 0 0.5 on the board. And Antoine, let's see what happens here with this free throw. Off the rim, and Antoine gets the ball, does not go, and did not beat the buzzer anyway. So a two-point victory for the Piedmont International University Bruins. Final score, 78 to 76 over the Eagles. Nash Carter was 16 for 17 from the line, and all of those shots came in the second half. That gave him a total of 24 points to lead everybody. David Barron, four, 12 from Justin Valentine, 10 from Tamari Glenn, six from Amon Matthews. Josh Daniels had eight, Antoine Robinson, six, and Robert Neal, seven. For the Eagles, Marcus Dixon, 13. Ernest Johnson, 16. And Coach Jones brings the teams onto the court for the closing prayer. Final score, 78-76. We're going to be back with you in just a little bit for the women's game between the Eagles and the Bruins on TVCEagles.com. <laughs> 